Our next uh, original film coming up, uh, The Devil's Got My Arms, and we were talking yeah. about Can't Sleep and your kind of overall vision of what you want to see in the future and, and other projects that uh, mm -hmm. uh, that are coming soon. Um, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll say oh, that yeah. at the most. They're coming soon. <laughs> yeah. uh, but the three projects we have right now are kind of things that have been tying in that. And uh, yeah, a good segue into The Devil's Got My Arms. Uh, what can I talk about? The Devil's Got My Arms because I actually got to experience to be on set for this one. Um, yeah, I want to know. I want to know what you were thinking. You didn't really know much about me. You just heard no. from a friend, like, "Oh, there's this guy." Like, I want to know what you thought when you went into this and just the whole, <laughs> the whole like nine yards and whatnot. We have a mutual friend that hit me up, and she basically asked me, uh, you know, offered me. She 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 told me that you were looking for somebody to play a role. Um, someone that's mm -hmm. my height and that can kind of fulfill those shoes. And I'm like, oh yeah, you know, I don't fuck it. Why not? You know, I may never get a shot at this. Yeah, again. Right. Let's, let's have some fun <laughs> with it. Um, prior to this, I only been on like one working moving set, uh, movie set. Uh, and that was a little small independent film that, uh, my cousin's friend shot in downtown Los Angeles. And, and I got to help him nice. do the sound for that. So. Uh, other than that, that was the only movie set I got to be on. And then uh, I, I show up. Uh, for starters, I'm told to show up, I think, around. It was like 9, 10 o'clock at night, right? Uh, it was a night shoot. It was yeah. great. Uh, we filmed. Where were we at? We were at like kind of like the Long Beach area, right? Like somewhere out there. It was it was in like Long Beach, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, we were in this, this nice area. house in Long Beach. I, I, I remember showing up and being like, Damn, it's like it looks like a frat house. Like, all right, let's let's yeah, let's, right. let's go have it some fun. It does look like a frat house. It does, but it's a nice house. Don't get me wrong; it's a beautiful house. Yeah. Like, if I own that thing, I'd I'd freaking put every room to use with that with with Dude, studios, real, offices, man. every. You know what I mean? Like, um, yeah. So I show up. You know, I'm, I'm kind of I, uh, Marissa comes out and and comes gets me, introduces me to everyone. Uh, for for those who don't know, um, and it's kind of funny when when I when I'm gonna say this out loud, but um, and, and then when you see me on this, it's a whole different thing. But I, uh, in person, I am oh, yeah. somewhat antisocial. Um, I, I am a pretty quiet person. Unless someone comes up and talks to me, then I can strike a conversation. Uh, I was very quiet the entire night, only because I didn't know. I didn't know Noah. I didn't know how he ran things. Like I started seeing and and everything, and I, I realized everyone was chill. But at the same time, like I didn't want to be the guy that fucked takes up or anything so i was just like i'm just gonna sit quiet i'm gonna sit in the background if they need me for anything i'm right here i'm chilling like i'm just gonna watch this happen um i i had a lot of fun uh believe it or not like i know i was very quiet and i was very off to the side and stuff but i i, I had a lot of fun mainly because i you know i was doing that because i was more just observing everything i was i was just more fascinated and yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm fascinated in the filmmaking process and everything and, and to kind of get to see how this was done, especially in a, in a, in a horror film, uh, this was a lot of fun for me and, and whatnot. I mean, we got so many great experiences and so many uh, uh, great memorable moments that when I watch this short, I'm just like, this is this was fun to do. I, I had a good time. Is, isn't everything. that <laughs> – I'm glad that you, you were able to be a part of it too because when, you know, when she brought you up and I was like – I was like thinking about it. I was like, oh, my God, that would be great to have him be in it. And I was – I was a little concerned that you would, you would not feel like, you know, comfortable. Cause like I said, this was like during the pandemic and everyone, you know, everyone had their thing or whatnot with like yeah. the whole situation. But, uh, when we, when I met you, I remember I was like, dude, this guy is huge. Like, I was like, <laughs> Oh my God. Like I'm, I'm like five ten on a good day. Like when I saw him, I was like, Oh my God, this guy is like barely, he, he like barely passed through the doorway. I was like, Holy shit. Like this, this is going to be so cool. Yeah. And, Something <laughs> I don't know if we should talk about. Let's. I think we should talk about the first. We'll showcase the first scene first before we get into your segment at the end. But there is some stuff I wanted to, you know, talk about with the behind the scenes aspect of of your creature and what we did in the practical version and how it kind of like changed up at the end. But um, no, it was it was great to meet like to meet you in person and be able to like have you on set. And the That's fact that fun. you were able to kind of watch and have some time before you got into your scene, you know, you had some time to get comfortable and see the people that were around. And the thing is, like, you know, 
me as like a, a filmmaker and working with my crew and my, my cast is I usually only work with people that are people that are accepting with others and are bring good energy. Like it, 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 especially in horror films, like you would assume that people that are making these films are like the same way. Like they're all like, like crazy, like demonic and whatever. But like, it's, it's not like everyone's like super friendly, especially the horror industry is a good example. Like my newest film, uh, what happens in the woods, I got to meet a lot of different scare actors and, and actors that have been like really big name films. And I was expecting them to, you know, act a certain way. And I was, I was wrong. They were so friendly and they're like, so eager to be like, yeah, let's do it. So like when I met you, I, that was like the first of many of like, you were just hungry. You were eager to be a part of it. And you were like, I just want to watch. I want to just be a part of this. Yeah, and, no, and I just, have fun. I, I'm, I'm fascinated. We just, uh, we just got, we just did the Warner brothers tour yesterday. This is my fourth. That's my fourth oh, time yeah. doing the tour. Um, Dude, it's amazing. And I, so I'm just fun. fascinated. I, I, I really am. We got to walk on like a, a set for one of the shows that they're doing that show all American. We got to actually walk mm, on the, yeah, the actual yeah. set and everything. And every, like, I'm fascinated of how it's all like said and done and like how, how, like how realistic you can make something look on camera. And then you see the behind the scenes and it's literally just a fucking, a wooden wall. And it's like a wall or like a fucking, sheet or something. Yeah, yeah. I'm just like, this is so nuts of how real they can make this look on TV. Um, but no, dude, I, I had a blast and, and not to mention before we even get started, I have to tell this story. Uh, that night, I believe it was a week, it was a weekday night. Cause I remember the next day I had yeah. to get up, I had to be up at like 6am to go to work. Um, and I, and I, I think I ended up staying until like 12, one in the morning. Um, because I was just that fast. Even when I was done with my stuff, I was just that fascinated with stuff that I wanted to see how this was going to play out. Um, and the one thing I remember, I think we were like, I was like in like two or three hours in already. And we were filming a lot of scenes with screaming at the time. And oh, I, I know. Exactly. Yeah. I, I, I so like, I, I, I think it was in between takes. Like we were just kind of BSing and stuff. And like, I was talking to you. I'm like, yeah. So I noticed you guys are fucking doing a lot of screaming. I'm like, that's going to be, that's going to be really cool on film. I was like, how's it holding up with the neighbors though? <laughs> and yeah. I was like, you guys get the cops calling you or anything. And he, you're like, nah, not yet. And you're like, you just jinxed us though. And sure enough, like literally, I think like 30 <laughs> minutes later, the cops showed up to the house asking if everything was okay. And we had to explain to the cops, like, no, we're, we're filming a project. Like, you know, like no one's actually getting hurt. Like if you want to come in and see everyone or talk to everyone, you're more than welcome to. Like we're just filming a, a little short film. And he was like, oh, okay. He's like, we'll just keep it down. They called, complained about it. And so I remember, I remember having to, to watch the takes after that. Cause it was so like you're not gonna notice this unless you were there to see it. Uh, but it was so funny to watch these takes after that because she had a very strong scream to her. And dude, scream queen for sure. Oh my like, god, she had that power. It was it, it, it was it crazy. insane. And 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 to see the fact that you know she had a, like she. I mean, it was good for her voice because she didn't have to scream anymore. But like to watch those takes of her scream, but like you don't hear anything. It's just like for the camera. It was just like, oh, this is gonna be this is gonna be great to film, but this is gonna probably look good after it's said and done. I think we went through that scene. Yeah. We went through that scene a good like six or seven times at it, least. It was definitely like six or seven times. Um, there was a lot of different, you know, adjustments that we made, and just about that. Um, that's our lead actress in this film, and she. This was a, I think this was her debut, I believe. Um, which phenomenal. Yeah. I think they all did incredible like work, but especially her with with the fact that she was able to scream and it felt real like yeah. it felt real like i when i would i heard it the first time i got i felt nervous that i was like oh shit like are the nerve are the neighbors gonna know like are, are like they think i'm gonna murder someone so the fact that the cops came she should be proud of herself that the cops showed up Scream that the scream was murder. real enough yeah <laughs> um it, it definitely was a, a challenging scene because there was a lot to do during right. that scene um when when you guys check it out there's there's you'll know exactly what we're talking about there's something that happens before she screams that took us a couple tries but it is so fascinating the way it all plays out um but yeah no that that was definitely a great icebreaker i think for uh when we when we met where you just saw that whole thing break out and it's like dude oh, that was great. like the cops are showed up and also shout out to long beach pd man they were so nice oh, and they, they were, were so reasonable they're like oh all right, guys. Just, just wanted to make sure I didn't have to pull out, you know, pull out the whole squad and 
like breached their house or something. And I was like, oh, thank God. Like, they're like, now far from that. that. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Dude, it, the neighbors too were really nice. Um, the second night, uh, we, we, we told them, I was like, hey, no more screaming, I promise. We're just doing some like people's arms getting ripped off. I hope that's okay. And <laughs> they all just laugh. They're like, what the fuck are you making, dude? I was like, you'll, you'll, you'll see it in a couple months. But um, yeah, that is definitely a, a fun. funny behind the scenes like moment. But yeah, if if you want, we can go over to that that scene right now so people can see what we're talking yes. about. It's uh, so I uh, so a little weird. backstory on this scene too, uh, at least on my end. Uh, this is the scene we're going to talk about. This is the uh, is this the the ripping of the arms right here of Mercer's arms, right? Uh, yeah, six okay. six minutes and fifty in. So yeah. this is uh, this was this is when I came in. We were we were filming up here for a long time, uh, a few hours actually. We were upstairs filming at this this scene, and I remember the the at least from my point of view, I remember the the biggest struggle for us was how are we going to accomplish a scene like this practically. Like, how are we going to do it so we didn't see anyone's faces, so it looks like this is the creature that's coming off? And this, and I think we pulled it off really well. What I th- I definitely agree. I think there was a lot, because the thing is, with this film, I wanted to do all this stuff practically. That was right. my goal. Obviously, some things had to be adjusted, but I think it was for the better. Right. But majority of it, I was like, you know, if we can nail this practically, that's going to be killer that's going to be something that's going to make our film stick out in a different way um and after a couple tries you know six or seven tries we were able to nail one shot down and the screen was good the rip was good and like the shot there was no one in the reflection and you know it it worked out and i'm really grateful that we were all able to work together to make it happen but uh this scene is definitely very weird and pretty gnarly like the whole play out but and uh, for those i yeah. haven't showed or told about this because i have showed this to quite a few people um i'm actually briefly my arms are cameoed in this scene um oh yeah i was one of the people <laughs> yeah, off arms uh and that i have to say i ain't gonna lie I, i'm not gonna lie to you i was a little frustrated because it was very uncomfortable but you know what i sucked oh, it up yeah. and i pulled through because i was like this is gonna look really cool when it's all said and done i so. i appreciate <laughs> that you sucked it up because that is not comfortable no it, it was not comfortable at all no <laughs> there was like I, I believe there was like three of us like right there yep. all holding the arms all kind of in this like I'm not even lying. Like we were all kind of like piled onto each other. I was on the very bottom. <laughs> Everyone else was kind of like on the side of me really close. We all had our arms there um, and we were going to rip off the arms. And then what was the shot was I'll, I'll set it up. The shot was uh, we rip off the arms. Marissa's body falls to the floor. Uh, our act, our main actress screams and runs down the stairs. Um, this was a, a really, a much, it was a really big, it was a, fucking bitch the film but it was a lot it came out great. yeah it really did it was a bitch for everyone because it <laughs> yeah. wasn't there was frustrations even behind the camera i remember that specifically like you guys were getting frustrated out of things because lighting didn't look good in certain areas and and we were trying to figure yeah. out how we can get it as dark as possible in that room so we didn't see any of us it was just like our arms and that was it so yeah let's just fucking watch it i mean uh, this was a good scene to film let's this was it. a fun one to uh be a part of so uh this is devil's got my arms <laughs> this is going to be the scene of marissa uh, her her death scene essentially, um, and here we go. A little three, two, and one. Mind you, the lighting for this fucking film was just so good too. Like I don't know how you chose like the wall lighting and stuff, but it was Dude, a lot of it, fun. it it's so pretty, man. <laughs> I love the blue. Yeah, the blue is so good. It really gives it that nighttime yeah. feel. Yeah, I actually was inspired by the first Nightmare on Elm Street with the blue, and that's why I used that in this film. I was like, I really wanted to give a little nod to that. Oh, here we go. This is the scene. Yeah. For the people that don't really know what's happening right now, (laughs) there's a game that they played that would that went wrong and now they're basically getting paying the consequences. So it's kind of yeah, paying the consequences. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> Look at this. Now there's all of our arms coming in. We Lift them up. Set coming in at the end. Yep. God, that and, the reaction and, too. And I and I also think the the thing that makes this scene so scary and, and perfect. There's my finger right there. There's my hand. Um, I think what makes oh, that scene. This is it right here. This is awesome. A little cut to black, and then the arms coming off. Yeah, I remember shooting that. Oh. That, that scream though. And us pulling the arms in. 
slowly going back. Right now, they're attaching this creature's attaching their the arms to the back of its body. And there you go. There's Marissa's Bam. arms. There's the hands. And now they're attached. That this scene, man, it, it is wild that we were able to pull it through. Like I, I knew in the back of my head, I was like, I know we can do it. I know we can do this. Yeah. It was not comfortable, but we did it. And no, I'm we did it. Proud of everyone else that put that's just sucked it up for it because it turned out great. It, did. it, it actually won us a couple awards um, for the uh, Brooklyn uh, Horror Film Festival. That's how we. That's how we won uh, the award. It was from that scene. Nice. They told us, like People's Choice. It won from that scene. Uh, in the finale too, which um, we'll we'll show we'll show you guys in a second. But uh, yeah, that scene was really challenging because with our makeup artist, you know, she had the um, you know the fake arm that we used for Marissa's arm, and it had the silicone or what's it called? Like the is it silicone? I think that's what it is, or yeah. the, something so, like that. I don't yeah. know. She. She had like she had that stuff attached to her like shoulder pocket, so it was like kind of like a suction rip. Right. And we noticed that it wasn't really working. There wasn't enough blood. It wasn't really being visible with the lighting. So we ended up having it completely ripped off, and we used the sleeve as the rip to be able to get that motion because the shot is kind of technical. It's being covered by the arm, and it's revealing her face while she's screaming. And it's such a unique shot. Like it's it's one of my favorite shots that I've ever done where it's revealing two different things at the same time. And you're getting the reaction from the the, the talent and right. this this kill like right in your face. You just see that thing shred. And my composer, he also did he does sound design for me as well. And he's a cook. So <laughs> in that scene, the pop, he used a fresh chicken that he baked and he just put the mic in and he just went <laughs> and it was like the juiciest rip <laughs> ever. And it, it I was like screaming when I saw that, I was like, "Oh, dude! Like, oh, Sounds that's good. great!" Like, but um, no, this scene is definitely like a gnarly scene, oh, especially man. since we're, we're we're showing that a uh, practical aspect of it. But uh, yeah, yeah. And, and, I, yeah. and I also believe this was the last scene we probably shot upstairs. That after, like, because literally, the way yeah. I noticed you were doing it, you were kind of doing it in order just to kind of not confuse anyone. I don't know what you had you guys had done the day before because you guys, I know you guys had started filming. Mm -hmm day before too so you guys were i don't know yeah. when you usually shoot things are, are you the type of person that kind of keeps it in order of the script or is it based on opportunity what you have available to you at the moment that's a good question usually it goes based off of locations um so if we're shooting in different locations for example can't sleep we had multiple locations right that usually goes based off of what's the easiest with uh actors and getting the locations for a film like this, when it's all taking place in one location, I like to stick with it going in order right. or whatever's the most convenient with talent. You know, So this one did go in order. There were, I think, a couple scenes where we flopped them. So when Ali, which is the first female that gets killed in this film, she got killed. We did that later on before the final scene here that we're about to watch where – you know, you get your debut that sadly got, you know, switched out. But um, that was shot before that. And we kind of just like switched it around a little bit. But most of the time, it kind of goes based off a of location. And we stick by the way the script is, and the way the story is. So there isn't a confusion with people and like, you know, like knowing when the scene's going to happen and what's going to be happening. But uh, yeah, no, it usually goes. Yeah, I try to keep it easy and like simple with most people. Yeah, no, I I because I, I had noticed that like right after we finished this scene, we we ended up going downstairs for the remainder of of of, of shooting because it, it was pretty much everything we needed to shoot was down there. We had a kitchen scene at that point, which was really shot. That was another funny one to watch because that was also the, oh, yeah. that was also post cops coming down and telling us just to keep it down. We can continue doing what we're doing. We we'll just keep it down, and it, it was one of those things where it was just funny because there was more there was more screaming in in the scene in the script and. We couldn't scream. So, like, just watching her do no. the screams without screaming to me was – and she was putting, like, full force. Like, she was really screaming, but she didn't make a – like, you just heard her go – It was like ah. – you know yeah, what I mean? it was like that's <laughs> like you, you that's all you we could do at the time you, we had to do all that in post you had to you had to come and have her redo like create some wild sounds for that and everything so yeah yeah we did some ADR in the man cave uh we have a little studio in the back and 
it was definitely funny with her reacting to her her scene with her not screaming. She was like, <laughs> like making like a very like low, but her emotion was so powerful. Like yeah. when you would see her scream, and it, it dude, she she nailed that. Like she that when she good. redid it, it all worked out, and it looks legit. It looks like she was actually you know screaming, going down the stairs, and like yelling. Um, but yeah, no, that was it. Was definitely really weird when we had that restraint to not scream especially since it's the whole buildup. So <laughs> yeah, it, it, I'm glad that we were able to figure it out. But um, yeah, no, this, this, you know, next scene is the, the one that scene, we were. Man. This is, this is where the this big one... buildup was for my, my stuff right here, man. I, I was like so happy, oh. you know, to be a part of it. And I still oh. am. I'm still very proud of everything we did. Now I'm not even, when you told me the situation, bro, at that point I was like, well, fuck it. I, I don't have time to get out to where he's at. Like I, he mm-hmm. needs to just do. I I respect his decision. He needs to do what he needs to do to complete the film. Um, essentially, what happened is behind the scenes. We'll talk a little bit about what it was behind the scenes. Um, I I essentially was casted to play the the final creature that you get to see in this film that you kind of see throughout this film. But I was played as the the body behind this creature. Um, and essentially, we had this like really really good put together like rig that we had Ooh. it was like a backpack thing and and we had like uh like hoodies a bunch was, of arms and hands yeah i mean it was to the point where i remember walking i, I they had to guide me in so like even if this would have stayed in the film everything would have been like all the sounds you would have hear would have been done in post because there was so much going on i had to wear my hoodie over my face like i could not see a damn thing um, and I told Noah, I was like, listen, dude, I'm trusting you. So you just guide me and you let me know where to go and where to stop. And I'm just going to mm. trust you. you you're going to literally have to guide me in movement and everything. Cause I can't see a damn thing that I'm doing. So you're going to have to, and you did a really good job at that. You, you made sure like, all Thank right, you. you're like, all right, here we go. Cameras rolling. All right. Action. All right. Walk in very slowly, very creepy, you know, have that little hunch in you kind of stop go around you act like you're hearing things mm-hmm. turn around yeah you know it was a whole like there was a whole like movement you, you specific movie you wanted to try to accomplish with this creature and i feel like even with the cgi version you you accomplish it better than what i can offer i mean i did the best that i absolutely Aww. can yeah dude you did a phenomenal job man especially since with all like i said with all of our restraints you know there were a couple people that were still living in the, in the house that we were in that were like, hey, you got to keep it down, man. You got to like, you know, wrap this up. So we were, you know, like I said, this was during the pandemic and everything was like kind of like hectic. You know, we tried our best to play it out. And I think you did such a great job with understanding the scene and like understanding the way that this is supposed to play out. And that's the thing, you know, all the films that I've done are supposed to be experimental. You know, you try, you want to accomplish a new objective. You're like, dude, wouldn't it be so cool if we can have a creature that has a bunch of hands on his back and he's getting them from the victim victims that he kills? That would be sick. We're like, okay, well, you know, we could do it the easy way, which is, I hate to say it, CGI usually is pretty, pretty easy to do. Um, or we could try to do it practically. And if it doesn't work, you know, we can just go back to plan B and, and go from there. And the fact that we were able to do this and it works to an extent, um, is phenomenal like i i just i love the fact that we were able to accomplish something like that obviously it did get scrapped at the end but at the same time it's still like for the people that were able to experience it it's so like just it was fun it's just yeah it's just awesome like seeing that but um no it definitely was a great scene because it's all kind of a one take as well yeah it's not as long as the uh can't sleep ones one take but it is it, it did get split up. It was supposed to. We all shot it in a one take form, but we did. I did cut it up in post. But um, it had its own tone to it that I think was really cool. When you came in, did your whole motion around, and then you go in the background, and then all the hands come out from behind the couch. Like all that plays out. But uh, yeah, I mean, I will send you a copy so, of what the before looked like. Yeah, so we're so gonna, you can we're show gonna... the. We're gonna show the audience first the uh, the the finished product version, the one that's in the final film, uh, to get the idea of what the scene looked like, and then we'll show you a little bit of uh, behind the scenes. With with okay, now with the behind the scenes one, do we have the audio? Can we hear audio of you talking in the background, guiding, <laughs> or is that a no no on that one? I believe I believe 
I believe we do. All right. Um, if that's I, the case, I'm going to leave the audio confirm. in so they get an idea of what we were talking about. But Oh, my God. I mean, that was cool. No, I mean, okay. I, 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 listen. <laughs> it was as cool. A fil- as a film guy, watching behind the scenes, I love I love watching that shit. It's like it's basically telling you yeah. how, how you were freaking directing, man, and and all that. But, uh, all right, we're going to take a look at this end scene right here. This is uh, this is easily the, the – this is the buildup right here. This is what you've been all waiting for while you're watching this short film, uh, the, the grand buildup of all this. Um, and the, the final, uh, essentially the final creature reveal. Um, so here we go, uh, at 8.53 right here. This is when our, uh, main girl, she's just run down the stairs, just discovered another body downstairs, and now she's in hiding from this creature, and we get our creature reveal, so let's check out the final creature reveal in three, two, and one. Like, her facial expressions, dude, were just, she was legitimately terrified. On point. <laughs> and then there's the creature right there. Bam. Oh, the arms the extending, sound, man. man. I mean, that's and awesome. Then he's, then he's gone. <laughs> gone. He, he busted that's him like a Michael Myers. Here, bro. He did. He just homie just gone. And then we get into this this take, which is all practical. It's going on from here. I think as I was Man. heading out, you guys were uh, in the m- middle of like rehearsing how you were going to do this. Dude, we got to talk about how we we accomplished that take because that was just. Oof. Oh. And there we go. And that's what kind of just... and then the up. final jump scare, by the way, another jump scare. Yeah. Oh my god. There goes her arm. And the arm is gone. Yeah. That Dude, scene. So let's let's talk about this scene, man. Because uh, first and foremost, I need to fi- I, I want to find out um, how. Uh, so how hard was it? Obviously, uh, having the the shot that you wanted. How hard was it to go into post and kind of CGI that at that at that point? Because I imagine you kind of have to work around my body and whatnot, and kind of have to work around the height and everything. And then you did, you did a really good job of kind of envisioning the arms coming out and stuff. I thought that was a really when I saw the final product, I was like. Holy shit! This thing is dope. Uh, how hard was it in post production to kind of have to touch that up uh, after kind of seeing it? So that that is a really good question on that that aspect on that. I would say when we first went through like the second pass, it was like the first time we we gone through the second pass of review, and we were kind of like discussing and we're like, okay, you know, something about it is just not really working. It's not really hitting. So we might just need to reshoot it and i remember when i was thinking about it i was like damn like that nobody wants to hear that nobody wants to hear like hey we're gonna have to reshoot it let's get everyone back let's go to the same location because it takes a lot of time and i love to prep stuff i love to get things prepped months before so we have no reason to like have things flop um so when that happened i was like i was like there's got to be another way like i in my back of my head i'm like there's got to be another way so thankfully um one of my friends one of my good friends he has a friend that is learning how to do vfx he was like hey man you know he came in he came to town he's from florida he came into town got to hang out with him didn't talk about film we just got to hang out and i was like this guy's great man and i told him i was like have you ever worked on a horror film and he obviously never had an experience on that. He's like, dude, like what? No, I do anime stuff, like anime, like animation and stuff like that. And I was like, you know what? Like I have a scene and I'm going to send it to you. Just, just tell me if you think you would be able to do this. And I, I brought up the idea of like the creature just standing there, stagnant, like standing there, the hands curl up. You get the sound of the popping from all the, the new arms that just been attached. You know, it's like, it's like when you sleep on your arm funny yeah, and you wake up, you're like, Oh, Oh, you feel weird. That's what I was thinking of the creature feeling it's like stretching out the arms and getting used to like the new set you know so i told him all that and i, I explained to him like this is kind of what i'm going with um let me know if you'd be able to do it he told me he's like you know what like i'm gonna try it i'm not promising that it's gonna be something that i can do but i'm gonna try my best and you know after a month he sent me that and i i remember when i watched it, i was like dude this is great like this this works really well i sent it to my composer he, he put the extra sound effects, the hands popping in, like the little riser. I don't know if you hear it, but like when it cuts back to her reacting, right. expecting that the thing's going to pop out, the music stops. Right. It kind of gives us a little riser and it stops and it hits so well when the guy disappears in the background. Um, so 
the process behind it took over a month to re-edit um and it was definitely worth it i'm i'm really glad that i was able to find someone that was eager and, and willing to do it you know because yeah he he like i said he had no experience he uh he um he was still in school and whatnot and he did a phenomenal job and he's now working on some of my new films he worked on what happens in the woods uh, but he is definitely someone that is on the same boat as me where we're just trying to learn or trying to like improve our skills. And he created that. And I think it's definitely really unique and cool in its own way. But uh, yeah, that was, it was, it was definitely a challenge. I'm not, I'm oh, not yeah. saying it was easy. It was definitely a challenge because we had to mask out the background. Uh, we had to, um, it was a, tr it was a moving shot. So we had to stabilize it and get rotoscoping for people that, our editors that are there to be watching this will know what I'm talking about. Like rotoscoping is like basically masking out the clip. So it doesn't look like it's been replaced. It looks like it's still blended into the background. Cause that's all a fake background that we're using right. from a still image that we blurred out and we just try to formulate it properly. So it has that same motion from like a normal shot. Right. And you know, thankfully it, it worked and I'm like, right on dude. That's just another awesome scene that we get to showcase and, people seem to enjoy it so i mean yeah oh, that, it was definitely a challenge it, it it was it was fun to make uh as well and uh noah you've been kind enough to actually give us a little bit of behind the scenes uh exclusively for this video so uh let's take a look a little bit of what that shot looked like uh prior to the cgi um and like i said we had a great time filming this and I, I was not mad one bit when he told me the news of having to to do it i was like dude i understand you're a fucking filmmaker this is your project like i want you to make it the best mm -hmm. that you can make it like i i was not mad about one bit because i still had regardless i still had a memorable experience and i still had a fun experience at that so that's what i took out of this like whether i was in the movie really or, or not i mean you know, it doesn't matter because to me, it, the, the final product came out. So let's take a look at, at, at a little behind the scenes of what that was filming uh, as far as with me there, uh, no one directing. Um, and that's a lot of fun. So let's take a look at that real quick. Camera's rolling. This is scene eight, take three. all right so with that being said i mean that uh, that th this film was another great installment another big piece of the puzzle going forward um especially when we when we when we roll out this next one i mean uh your your latest and greatest man Ooh. what happens in the woods <laughs> a found footage uh horror film uh Talk to me, man, before we get into some scene breakdowns, because there's a couple things we got to talk about in this film. Uh, the last film we're talking about in the trilogy right now. Um, 